Thank you so much for being here. It's a real moment for me to come together with the community. I appreciate all the work that you're putting in, all the work that the Googlers are putting in, and I'm really excited to learn a little bit more about what you're gonna build next. My name is Tris Warkenton. I'm a director at Google DeepMind. I lead product for the Gemma family of models, and I also work on advanced AI. And I think these things come together because without you, without developers, and without the community, I don't think we can get to the next stage of AI. So I'm here to tell you a little bit more about what we're doing with Gemma and why we're really excited about the Gemini era. We've got a great set of talks for you here today. After me, you'll have an amazing fireside chat with two of our best, including the person most in charge of Gemini. Really excited to have Oriel here. So uh, look forward to that. Let's dig in a little bit. I want to say we've been doing open development and open research for a very, very long time at Google. Dee alluded to some of the papers, but I want to talk a little bit about the things that we've launched. These are things that have been foundational to the AI community. TensorFlow, JAX, Distillation, BERT, even Lambda, Party, Imagine, Diffusion Models. There are so many things that have been critical to the way that we use AI today and making this new wave of AI innovation possible. And I think that so much of that has been powered by you, by developers worldwide, not just by Google alone. And it's very easy for us sometimes at Google to lose sight of that. And that's what I'm really excited about in the Gemini era is to bring that heritage of truly great open development forward into a new wave. About eight months ago, we brought together Google Brain and Google DeepMind, two of the top AI research labs in the world to create what I like to think of as a super unit for AI development. Many of the things that we've built in Google DeepMind so far really show what's possible when you bring the best and brightest together inside of Google. And as we've made Gemini possible, we're bringing you into that conversation to make sure that you can also bring what's possible forward. So what do we actually do as research labs? One of the most important parts of what we do in any research is that we publish. And of course, we publish a lot of papers. When you look at top conference papers, top influential papers, Brain and DeepMind were the two top publishing labs and still are today. But that doesn't just stay in the research publication sphere. What really excites me is that a lot of this innovation makes its way into Google products. And a lot of the times it's in things that you probably heard about once and then you forgot about it, right? As we move into this new era, AI is at the forefront. It's not just behind the scenes, but you see it in your Google Home products. You see it in cloud, you see it in search. I worked on everybody's favorite Google product for five years before joining the AI research area, which is of course ads, um, <laughs> where I did AI things in ads. And I got to see firsthand how influential the last generation of AI was for product improvement, for optimization. And I think that is going to be extended into a lot more spheres in life. I wanna talk about five things that I really think are critical for the future of AI. And I'm gonna go a little bit quickly through these. One is that we are in the Gemini era and I'm really excited about what Gemini can do. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But the generality of AI models is really astounding. It's not just a classifier or sentiment analysis or ranking or scoring, right? It's one model or one system that can do a whole range of things. That has really captured the imagination of everybody here, I imagine, as well as users and developers around the world. That trend will continue. The ability to generalize and make something that can perform amazing feats on a general basis rather than a specific one is something that I think we're all seeing today and we look forward to even more. Second is efficiency. Efficiency is a really tough topic. When you think about training models, it is a fantastically inefficient process in a lot of ways. Gemma is trained on approximately 6 trillion tokens. If you think about how many tokens that is, that is many orders of magnitude more than you will see in your entire lifetime. And each one of you here is a very good language model yourself, right? And hopefully you have a lot of your life left as well. Uh, 
I think we have a lot of progress to be made in generalizing from data sets and making sure that we're doing a great job on the tasks that we actually target. And I look forward to seeing what you guys bring to the fore with Gemma and with Gemini. The third one is my own personal favorite. I genuinely believe that we are not in the middle of the AI revolution. I'm not even sure we're in the middle of the beginning of the AI revolution. I think we might be at the beginning of the beginning. We're just figuring this out. And that's amazing because we've done so many cool things, but we have so much more to give and so much more to achieve together. And I think fundamental to that is a total change in the way that we use computers from human computer interaction to collaborating directly with computers. And I see this every day with Gemini products. You look at Gemini Advanced, it helps me organize my day. It helps me understand my schedule. It helps me be more thoughtful about the things that I should do for my kids, my family. You know, I think it's an amazing thing that we haven't figured out how to integrate yet, but that's going to take the effort of millions, not just thousands. Then big worldwide impact things. One of the things I'm most proud of in Google DeepMind is our commitment to science, health, sustainability, areas that impact us all, making energy more efficient, combating climate change. These are things that are really a responsibility of people that innovate. And I like to think that we can make space for that, not just at Google, but worldwide and in partnership with our friends. Then responsibility, safety, reliability. These are at the heart of what we do. And we have a really great speaker that'll come up uh, shortly here, Ludo, uh, who will tell you a little bit more about how we worked very hard to make responsibility the core focus of Gemma. So I wanna talk a little bit about Gemini. I know you've probably heard a lot about Gemini, I personally am extremely excited about Gemini because I think it unlocks completely new capabilities for humanity. And as I look forward into the future, I couldn't be more excited about the way that might get integrated in Google products and in your products, in things that you work on, things that you talk about. I think that multimodal from the ground up, 10 million tokens in a context window, it is a stunning achievement of science that now we have to bring forward into the future of what it means for consumer development, for business to business apps. What does that actually mean? Well, one of my favorite demos that I saw just this week, somebody posted you know, a toy web app that they built and they took some videos of three bugs in this little web app that they built. And then they put the code into Gemini 1.5 and they asked, hey, you know, what are these bugs? identify the co areas of the code where this is a problem, and then propose fixes for all of these. And just watching the results of that, which were all completely accurate, to me is absolutely mind blowing. Something that you all have probably done a million times in your lives, I know I have, just to watch it happen so quickly to identify where problems are, and it doesn't actually fix the thing. Of course, you still need to be part of this process, but it helps you be better at understanding, better at integrating. Tailing on to that, we took a look at Gemini technology and research, and we, we tried to build open models that honor that same tradition. So built from the same research and technology foundations that we use for Gemini, we built the Gemma models. And this is only a few weeks old at this point, and the progress has been absolutely astounding. So in 7B and 2B variants, both pre-trained and instruction tuned, we've released across an astounding array of surfaces. Whether you prefer PyTorch or Jax, you wanna use Keras, you like to use this in Colab, you are a Kaggle grandmaster over there, I saw you, yeah. Uh, you can use Gemma in so many places, whether you wanna put it on your local laptop, Gemma.cpp with deep SIMD CPU optimization, running on CPU, really, really fast. Highly recommend checking that out. On NVIDIA GPUs, where you can get tens of thousands of tokens per second on a single H200. Unbelievable. It's just amazing to see the progress even from a year ago. So what are our goals as the Gemma team? One, we want to make something that works for all of you. That is really important that as we go forward, it cannot be about the big model developers. It has to be about the community. That's how we build our strongest technology in partnership. Second, 
We want to enable you to tune and adapt on your own. So accelerating variant creation, highly recommend you use supervised fine tuning, LoRa fine tuning. We have a lot of examples. Go make your own Gemma variant. You can use them both personally and commercially, and they're absolutely amazing examples so far. Trust and responsible AI is at the heart of everything we do. And I think it's really important that we open a conversation about what it means to do safety in an era of open and responsible AI. And we have a talk shortly that after this, directly after this, that we'll talk about open source and open models. Then this event, learning from you. I got to have lunch with a few of you. Uh, I got to talk with a few more of you and I, I look forward to more. But we learn so much from what you stumble on, what you need. So please don't be shy. Come talk to me, come send feedback. I think we have, you know, in the tech report, we have an email list. You can actually send the research team an email and we'll have feedback mechanisms that we'll talk about as well. And then finally, I think it's about partnership as well. We mentioned Hugging Face, which we'll have a great talk later. We also have NVIDIA here. They will also give a really cool talk. That work is so important. As we grow, as we grow the capabilities of these models, it's really important that we work with top companies, top developers, in order to make the future possible effectively. From a performance standpoint, we're really proud of what we achieved with a very safe and responsible approach. Outcompeting models that are almost twice as large as the Gemma 7B uh, model on benchmarks. And what I'm even more proud of is that when you look at the instruction tuned models, I think that on human evals, when you look at a human comparison, the evaluations are really strong versus models many times larger size. And even looking just a year ago, I think cutting edge AI is not any better than Gemma 7B is today. Even just one year ago, if you use top quality models, I don't think that the actual language production is, is better than what we have in a model you could run on your laptop today. And we've seen incredible progress from the field. These are just a few of the things that have been built. You know, high tokens per second on Grok, Gemma support in Llama.cpp, uh, so many interesting things. You know, MongoDB published a blog about building a RAG system simply with, with Gemma. The progress, the momentum has been stunning and all of you are to blame, thank you. Uh, and I hope you will keep it up. I hope this event really inspires you to go build something with Gemma and go share it with the world. Uh, responsibility is really important to us. We take it in three phases. We think that when you design the model, it needs to be responsible. How is it that we work on tra transparency and robustness? And then how is it that we enable you to build responsible AI? We released along with Gemma, a generative responsible AI toolkit, which Ludo will tell you a little bit more about. And I'm really excited to hear your feedback and see what you build in the future of safe and responsible open models. But why does openness even matter? Well, right now, a lot of the progress is being siloed at top labs, at companies that you've heard of, at Google. And I think that that is a real disservice to the power of the developer community. And so making something that literally everybody on this planet could go and use, you know, if you have an internet, if you have internet access, you could be using Gemma within one second. That's kind of astounding. Making it something that you can build on, you can do LoRa fine tuning in Keras 3 in two lines of code. Making it so that you guys have an ability to change what's possible with cutting edge models. That's really important and I think a missing element for a lot of the way that we've built in the last you know, few years. Second, making sure that it's across all the surfaces. It's very, very hard to use everything everywhere or deploy everything everywhere. And we're still on that progress. We're still on that journey for Gemma. But meeting you, whether you want to use it on Vertex or you want to use it in GKE, our Kubernetes engine, or whether you want to use it on Kaggle or Colab or your local laptop or on a huge cluster, that is an amazing thing. However you like to develop AI, you probably have a reference implementation that will work with you for Gemma. And if you don't, we want to hear about it, or maybe you can build it yourself. And then finally, we want to make sure that the Google ecosystem serves you best. And that's why we optimize Gemma from end to end for Google Cloud. 
Really excited to share more about that. We'll have a whole section in the afternoon about deploying on Google Cloud, how you can use Vertex, optimize Google Kubernetes engine containers, uh, et cetera. So to close, I want to leave you with a question. And I encourage you each to think about this very seriously yourself. What would you build? If you could build anything, what might you build with Gemma? I think there's something really cool that's going to come out of this room. And I hope it's you that builds it. And if you do, let us know. Yeah.